was like, I will go and Whoa. f*** your therapist up. And I said that yeah. to him. I said yeah. that to him. And I said, I have a message for your therapist. Tell her to go f*** Greetings, fuckers. How you doing? Where you been? Who you who you doing it with? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the anti slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to our show. Are you going to be in Los Angeles on Saturday, May 11th at 9:45 p.m. at the Regent Theater? Well, we're going to be there, so we hope that you're there too, and we hope that you've bought a ticket. So far ago, yes. so long ago. Yes, if this is uh, for a live recording of the Guys We Fuck podcast, which is the same podcast that you're already ingesting right and now. And you know what? Means you like it. If you're tired of the spiel, the spiel is gonna go up until we sell We're gonna out. keep doing this. So if you if want this us makes to you shut upset, the fuck up, <laughs> you buy tickets. Yeah, this you is a tickets. threat that this will continue happening Whatever works. until our appearance at the Netflix is a joke festival is sold out. Because as we've t- told you time and time before, we're already on such thin Netflix ice with Netflix. Like Netflix. Honestly, it feels like a pity casting. I guess someone canceled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> we, we were made aware of in a timely manner. So I know oh, that. Oh, right. Yeah. So it does like everybody feel, had their announcements, although we didn't get our graphics until our, later. But, but, but we, they were working on the assets today. I yeah. don't know why it took so long, but um, probably because I just kept sending them weird photos, but that's because I didn't like the ones they were picking. <laughs> I didn't like the but ones they do. were picking. No one. Okay. When people pick your photos for you, it's it, especially if it's a guy, it's like, how do you think that's a good photo? It's like they sat under you and took a picture from the perspective of your chin. It was as if Bill Maher chose the photo. Oh my God. <laughs> That guy. Oh, wait. Oh, we didn't promote our appearance. Oh, yeah. Maybe Did we should Did you want to promote it? I mean, whatever. It's out there. I also think we should read in the coming episodes, not now because this is a really long email, but like more of those comments. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, funny. yeah, 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 yeah. It's so funny. And I'd love to be- Not a lot of overlap between guys we fucked and Bill Maher fans. Who would have <gasps> thought? What? That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Really kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I love being at a place where a negative- On my Instagram, I like, I, I won't let think- won't let things go only because like, I want people to be better, but like something like Bill Maher's YouTube comment section. I'm like, this is hilarious. Well, like the more comments just jog the algorithm. So I go, yeah. please yeah, keep say going, whatever baby. you want. Keep it going. This is great. I okay. love it. Uh, if you want to email us, it's sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Today's subject line, I'm low contact with my mom and I don't know why. You probably have a clue. Hi, Corinne and Christina, long time fucker. Love the show. 28 year old female living in Australia. Hello. This email is so long, I'll get to the point. Well, it's also still long, but that's okay. I wanted to read it. I have a super complicated relationship with my mother and it feels like it's really coming to a head now. I take in so much childhood trauma content online, Mm. which be careful about that. Look at other things. Look at cartoons. Something that makes you happy doesn't make you think about this shit. You can't can't think about it all the time. Well, and also be careful who you're taking it in from because a lot of these people are psychos and idiots. Yeah, and they're they're still traumatized and haven't really done the hard work. Yeah. When you when you're working through trauma, you kind of have to go through the desert, go to the desert and die and come back in a way. Uh, it's not necessary uh, for every single person, but it 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 is the most potent way to get through it. Um I take in so much childhood trauma content online and weird mother-daughter relationship content. And I've never found someone who has the issue I'm having with my mother. I distance myself from her. I'm low contact at this point and I feel super uncomfortable with her, but I don't have a good reason why. Well, the body keeps the score, okay? Wish it didn't, but it does. So maybe you feel unsafe for reasons that your uh, conscious brain can't identify. I'm an only child. Mom and dad are still together and I have and have a good relationship. They both worked full time from when I was six months old. I never experienced anything super traumatic in my upbringing. My parents are very close with their respective families and I'm the odd one out. Mm, maybe past life thing. I want to preface this by saying I remember barely any of my childhood. Okay, that is a huge yeah, red flag. Good. So children have this kind of brilliant mechanism that they are all born with where um, they, every child looks up to their mother and father like they're God, right? Because they're the ones responsible for your food and shelter and clothing and love and all, everything you need, your parent has to give you. And so sometimes when the parent is abusive, the child will um, internalize that and go, well, there must be something I'm doing to make them like this so that you can physically handle the fact that the person who's supposed to raise you um, is dangerous. Uh, a child would basically die if they really came to that realization at a young age with a young nervous system. So so keep in mind that if you don't remember your childhood and you have big blackout moments, 
that is a sign uh, that you gotta go to therapy. Um, uh, mainly from negative things. Okay, so I wanna preface this by saying I barely remember any of my childhood, not a lot from teenagehood, mainly the negative things. So I'm working with what I can for the background. My mom and I fought, uh, fought quite a lot when I was a teenager, probably a normal amount for what I can compare to my female friends. We argued mostly about two main things, studying and cleaning. My mom worked hard to move up in the corporate ladder in her career, but it took her a long time as she didn't go to university. When she was in her forties, she would come home from a long day of work and have to spend the evening studying to get promotions. I remember her saying she didn't want me to have uh, to be doing this when I was her age. She really wanted me to get a good, good enough grades to go to university. I had no clue what I wanted to do growing up and wasn't super academically inclined. She made more money than my dad who worked a blue collar job and had no interest in moving up a ladder. She was always getting on at me at, to study, do my homework in the evenings after school. I tried, but I was barely, uh, I was not really motivated. And oftentimes I would sit at the dining table with all my books out for hours, getting nothing done. Side note, last year I was diagnosed with ADHD, which explains so much about this and why I couldn't clean. The cleaning arguments were about me not cleaning up after myself around the house or not doing chores that were assigned to me. I was definitely hard work. Uh, I was definitely hard work as a teen. I remember us having screaming matches at each other that always started with either cleaning, cleaning or studying issues. This went on from around the age of fourteen to seventeen. There were a few core arguments that are burned in my memory. I dyed my natural hair from blonde to brunette with a home dye kit when I was home alone at the age of twelve or thirteen. I mean, that's like a typical, yeah. You get into trouble when you're that age because you don't know. My mom had explicitly told me no every time I asked to dye my hair. And one day I just did it myself. She was so apocalyptic. Is that what it's just? Apoplectic? I don't know what that word is. Mm. I'll look it up. Apoplectic. I don't know what that is. I'm like, I don't know many words, but I'll know if that's the word. A-P-O-P-L-E-C-T. Oh, overcome with anger. Oh. Indignant. Wow. Oh. I learned a new um, word well, I'm like, it has to be a real word because it's not underlined. I know right. that. So. Right, 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 right. She was so apoplectic. Wow. Love that word. She couldn't speak. Mm. She didn't speak to me for a week. Oh, that stinks. Had that. I remember thinking she must have told my dad not to speak to me either because my dad was always pretty chill and wouldn't give a shit if I dyed my hair and he didn't speak to me for a couple of days either. Cuck that's, move. That's such, yes. And it's like when a parent gives the child the silent treatment, fuck you, okay? Okay, I hate that. The second is when I was 19, I was on vacation without them visiting family abroad when I decided to book a tattoo appointment with an artist I'd followed for ages. I knew she didn't approve of tattoos. Well, you're 19, so fuck it. So I thought I was being mature when I gave her a heads up, nope, uh, message about the two inch tattoo on the back of my ankle the night before the appointment. I woke up to an essay from her about how it was the worst thing I could do. Some highlights, quote, you have the ability to excel in the highest level. A lot of that is to do with your beauty. So that's a weird thing to say. Uh, another quote, if you wanted to chop all your hair off, it would be catastrophic, but it's not permanent. Another quote, you're perfect. Just don't spoil it. Respect my wishes. People with tattoos look trashy and always regret it, etc. She also got my cousins my grandma, my aunt, and a family friend to send me messages urging me not to do it. This That's is fucking psychotic. Yeah, Your mom's fucking psychotic. psychotic. Our moms should be friends. This is really weird behavior. Uh, yeah. Just she's, like as someone who is coming from not weird behavior, yeah. I'm going to tell you, this is not, I know, like when you, and you started the email being like, I have nothing really traumatic for my, tra it's this always, is, dude, this is insane. It's people insane. with the worst childhoods, almost always. They're like, my childhood was normal. I don't remember any of it, but it was That's normal. why everyone always questions mine. I go, no, but mine seriously was. <laughs> I go, I, 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 don't, I don't have time. And I was like, I don't have the time to discuss this any further because we get, this, this is actually crazy. Yeah. And there's nothing like seeing your mother's behavior reflected in the eyes of your friends and loved ones around you. And then the first, for the first time you're like, wait, is that fucked up? Was that fucked up the whole time? Yep, it was. Uh, and third, I was booking a solo trip to travel to California when I was 21. I was going to stay in a hostel in San Diego and do a little bit of traveling while I was there. She was on board at first, trying to push through her anxieties. You're fucking 21. Like she needs, she, her, she's putting her tit in your mouth. Uh, but eventually two weeks before the trip, she broke down crying and begged me not to go because she was so anxious and thought I was naive and people would take advantage of me. Like her? Yeah, exactly. She's fucking projecting. Uh, I decided to cancel the trip. Mm, uh, you're, you were young uh, because she was in such a state until I came to my senses and decided to have the uh, the adventure over oh, uh, 
over to protect her feelings. Okay, so how old are you now? 21. 21. Oh, you're still 21 now? Oh, oh no, 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 oh, no, 28 now. In the story. So seven yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, keep in mind, these are the big three I can remember. So technically these could have been the most traumatic points in our relationship. Nope, if you can't remember them, they weren't. Uh, but as an adult now, I don't know if all these things listed above weren't a low contact, almost no contact at this point relationship. Well, the things are, so if these are the th- there are three things that stand out, these behavior, but, but like the, she's, these, these can't be isolated yeah. because these to me show so much more about who she is and how she interacted with you as a, a child, like she like, thinks she's like you're an extension of her, like that, like that, that, that like the tattoo and the hair, like the, her uh, her over obsession with your aesthetic, like yeah. that that something like that would never be isolated. That would leak into every part of your relationship. There's yeah. no way it couldn't. And let me tell you something, like even just a critical, overly critical parent that chips away at your soul, and maybe logically you you love them in quotes, but really your body is reacting to. So that's why when you said you're low contact and don't know why, I'm like. It's your body telling you, nah, not this bitch. Uh, the object, the objective positive things. She worked a lot to provide financially for the family. She got me enrolled in extracurriculars. She got me tutors for the subjects I was struggling in. She got me nice things for birthdays and Christmases. Okay, well, she so was, she's parent, obsessed with you being perfect. She says that to you already. Yeah. She is objectively a very caring person. Well, as long as you're um, doing everything she likes. Her family really appreciates her. She's a very she's very generous and selfless. Also note here, a lot of times, uh, like a mother can be one way to her daughter and then be a total angel to everybody else, okay? Sometimes that happens. In hindsight, I started feeling distance from her around age 18 and withdrawing from a relationship subconsciously. I was polite and still living at home, but I didn't go to her for advice or for a casual chat. I spent a lot of time in my room after college. This went on for years. I honestly can't remember much of our relationship at this time, but I wasn't spending loads of time at home, social life, going out, etc. I met my long-term boyfriend at age 19, so I was spending a lot of time with him too. By the time she begged me not to go to California, it must have been bad because I remember her sobbing saying, I wish you knew me when I was your age. There it is. We would have been best friends. Dude, there's nothing worse than oh. the best friend mom oh. is such Dude. a, if people think it's a, a good thing, it's, it's like not. a very bad it's thing. It's very bad. Do you know my mom and I had best friend necklaces? Christina. I gave them to her. Chris, you, I was like 26. How old were you? What? It was, yeah. When you were 26? Yeah, I knew it would make her happy. I didn't know, but I, at the time- Did you feel like she was your best friend? Cause I mean, I, I, I do I, feel like my mom is one of my best friends, but I would never give her her best friends. Necklace. No, I did not feel she was my best friend in any way, but oh, I was, yeah, I, I was hiding it. Did. But like, I was it was when I was an myself. adult, you know? The, yeah. it, like, it, like, so like if you become best friends as adults, that's fine. But like, if any time during your adolescence, you feel like your mom is your, uh, and not in like a cutesy way, it's hard because it's like- It's like Rory and Lorelai, like that wasn't well, as toxic. It's a, no, it's, it was, I'm on the third time around watching that series. Oh. It's actually very toxic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not speaking right now. It's toxic. Oh. Yeah, it's no, yeah. when you actually, well, when you like go, go to the inner depths of that show, the way I've gone, I, every, every watch I go, this is actually- wildly unhealthy. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, By the time I moved out of home by age 22, I would do the duty visit at home every few weeks. And I always felt uncomfortable around her at that point. (laughs) This is exactly, uh, well, you're younger than me when you started experiencing this, but I I was basically, my body couldn't take being around my mother. And I felt really guilty about that. Mm. And then I would start being a bitch to her and she would be like, why are you being a bitch? And she wasn't wrong. Like I wasn't being polite, but it was because she had chipped away at my soul and my bones from from day one since then that I and I wouldn't allow myself to see it. So I think you're just starting to allow yourself to see these things. It was like she switched and became a different person. Nah, you're probably just realizing she sucked. She was overbearingly caring and helpful and affectionate. I found it needy and weird and it made me pull away more. Sure. Yeah, that'll that'll do that. This dynamic continued over the years and I guess became more and more awkward because I just felt no connection to her. Yeah, because she's not coming from a place of love and actually caring about you or being curious about you. I felt uncomfortable with her in person and was less and less inclined to reply to her messages. I can logically see, uh, I could see logically that she was working so hard to be the main financial provider for the family. She admitted in one of our two deep conversations that dad wasn't a very active parent and she felt she had to be the disciplinarian Mm -hmm. and the emotional support uh, and everything else. Okay. I can attest to this. As I've said before, dad was chill. Uh, dads are always chill and I have no problem talking to him now. 
ironic. I will, I will step in here and say, I, I think part of growing up is also having, there's usually one parent who's doing more work. And, and as an adult, as a kid, you don't see that. It just seems like one parent is like stressed and mean and one parent's chill. Know that the chill parent is in most likely not doing enough work in the parenting relationship. So like you do have empathy towards the parent who was, had to take on the, the burden. Like yeah. it wasn't your fault, but like, I think to have empathy and like realize that our parents are human yeah. um, is a very important part of growing up as well. The mother tax is fucking awful. And one reason why I don't want to have kids. I moved from the home, the UK to Australia in 2022. She has gotten more and more needy and clingy, sending me super long messages about how she doesn't cope well without me. Mm. Mm, codependent. Uh, how she thinks I'll never come home, that she wants to know why I'm like this. Oh God, I'm getting PTSD. Jesus, fuck. Yeah, I was like, the why Woo! I'm like this. I feel like that your mom sent you like that, that exact message. Yep. Oh man. Uh, why I don't speak to her. We have had two big conversations about our relationship in the last four years. All I can tell her is what I've said above and that therapists have said she didn't meet my needs as a child. She can, don't try to make her understand that. And, that's she, all, and also like, just like, that there is a part of me help. that even though I am pro therapy, it's, it's saying what some therapist who's known you for like a year has to your parent who's on your, it feels like a fucking fuck you. Mm, there yeah. is a, there yeah. is a, that, that's, yeah. if I was a parent and some fucking, I even know like, so I haven't had, had an ex-boyfriend who I knew obviously super well and his therapist is sending him home, his therapist of like three weeks sending him home with shit about me. I was like, I will go and Whoa. fuck your therapist up. And I said that yeah. to him. I said yeah. that to him and I actually was so vindicated because he came back to me and he goes, yeah, that therapist actually sucks. I go, well, good. I, I, Cause I said, I said, I said, I have a message for your therapist. Tell her to go fuck herself. And I said, literally, please tell her that. And I think From maybe he Corinne did. Fisher. I hope he did. I said, she's unqualified. Get nice. the fuck out of my face. Um, so I, I, th just, you know, again, put yourself again. I'm not saying don't, but I just think that we have to really work the empathy in some ways. Yeah, I will say when I worked with a trauma, I worked with a trauma ther uh, specialist therapist for a really long time. And when I was talking to her about my mother, I was still on the cusp of like, well, this wasn't traumatic. It was, mm. she was like, your mom tried to kill your herself every time you had a milestone. And I was like, yeah, but she's ill. And it's like, she still didn't, paint my mother as an evil person. She wasn't even like, you should go no contact. She didn't, she didn't say, tell me what to do. Sure. She just recognized that like, it's, it's important to need for your mother to see and hear you as a child. And it's also important to recognize the, the ways that she damaged you. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of layers here. Well, of course she wasn't even, she wasn't actually even going to kill herself. She was just trying to take your spotlight away from you when you had, when you reached your milestone. She go, but I reached a milestone too. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, that's like God. such a, that's like, that's like a boyfriend who starts a fight on like an important night of your life. Yeah, totally. That's that same behavior. It's, it's, oh, this is too much about you back to me. Yep, dude. Yep. Obnoxious. She takes accountability for being so volatile with me as a teen okay. about how controlling she was. Well, that's really nice that she took accountability. She truly apologizes and doesn't try to deflect or deny how I feel about things. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. She and I both understand how those seemingly minor things have, because they're not minor, have caused me to feel so uncomfortable around her. Most people just suck it up and speak to their parents. My quote, trauma is not even anything compared to actual abuse or neglect or manipulation. It doesn't matter uh, how, comparing traumas, Yes, we can objectively say that, you know, getting raped as a child is worse than your mom being bipolar. I get on paper, sure. But it could also actually affect a person a similar way. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's pain. You, you were going through pain from an abusive parent. Um, yes, there are layers, but I just want to remind you of that. I don't understand why I have such a visceral reaction to her. I've tried to suck it up and call her slash see her so many times, but after a couple of minutes, I feel so withdrawn into myself. I just want it over and can barely speak. Speak in my language, girl. I feel I'm unfortunately a lot like her in my relationship with my partner too, controlling and anxiously attached. Mm. Uh, these are th That's great to be aware of that because these are things that can absolutely be worked on. So it's not a death sentence. I'm open to hypnotherapy to see if something truly traumatic happened that I just don't remember, but I honestly can't see that being the case. Well, if you don't remember years of your childhood, I think that's a clue that something, something's there. Well, and also before we get to hypnotherapy, to me, the first thing that I'm saying is like, well, can you go to therapy, couples therapy. therapy with your mom? Like if she's oh. like, if she's at least she's, so she's at least acknowledging it. Like, and she, you know, it seems like she's like being semi-receptive, right? Why not go to zoom therapy together? Like the way, the way you would to couples therapy. Like to me, it's like any uh, relationship yeah, that you want to work on. If the other person will show up with you, 
Why not? Yeah, and Zoom's a great idea because then you don't have to be in the same room with her. Because- well, they have to because they live in different countries anyway, but yeah. Oh, right, right, because UK, Australia. But yeah, like, I mean, and, I, and at least, you know, because it seems like you're not ready to like completely give up. And like, I, you know, I- I, you know, for me with like, you know, relationships, I'm like, just leave immediately. But like, this is the only mom. So like, I would say, yeah. I would try a little harder with this one before I decide not to talk to them. And yeah. I, if ultimately that's the best decision for you, that's the best decision for you. But like, yeah, why not go to fucking whatever they call mom, daughter therapy? I mean, don't call it couples therapy. That's a whole nother therapy session, but. Yeah, well, it's, fa- it's family counseling. Family, yeah. there you go, family counseling. If it's truly just what I explained in this email, how can I tell her that although she did everything she could, it wasn't enough? How can I tell her that my body fills with anxiety when I see a message from her? How am I managing life just fine without her? Well, I mean, that's because you're an adult. Yeah. I mean, the part where you said like, uh, you know, you get older and you stopped asking her for advice. I mean, that's just normal becoming an adult. Like I did that too. Cause at a certain point you have to fucking cut the umbilical cord. Right. But it also seems like, you know, her crying and saying I'm lost without you. You're never going to come yeah. home. That's familiar. It's a uh, therapist call that familial incest when the parent treats the child like the child is their parent. Yeah. No, that's, so she's leaning on you in a, a completely inappropriate way. That's weird. And that, for sure. that could be a huge reason why you, your body is not comfortable around her. I can tell you the last three or four times that I saw my mother in person, I wanted to fucking crawl out of my skin and burn it. I kept like, it was so, and I was still confused. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Um, how any sort of relationship feels awkward, forced, unnatural, and how every interaction is just painfully uncomfortable. I can only bear to message her maybe once every month or two. She's calling me every day, even th- ugh, even though I asked her if we could only have a monthly message back and forth to update each other on what's going on in our lives. She has no boundaries. She doesn't fucking respect your boundaries, and that's, mm-mm. It's not enough for her. She wants more. I avoid seeing messages from her, avoid talking to her, avoid even my lovely grandma and dad's messages because the whole family is so stuck on why I, why I won't speak to her. Yeah, I and I know they yeah. will ask about it. Yeah, I lost, I mean, I have a very small family, but I don't talk to some of them because of that. I don't know if I even want a relationship with her. You don't because I can manage my life just fine without her and contact with her is so painful. If I do decide to spend thousands of dollars on therapy just to be able to have contact with her, it wouldn't be for my benefit. It would be for hers. I'm glad you said that. Uh, Any insight would be appreciated. Love a loyal fucker. I don't think it would be thousands of dollars. Like if you, I'll just financially, it depends. I mean, like, do you have insurance? You know? Right. Again, like if you've, if you already made the decision, you've already made the decision. Yeah. I, and I do agree with Corinne. I think it's, uh, and as somebody who's not, I go no contact with both of my parents. Uh, I think that I had to do everything for me personally. I had like the last time I saw her, I went down to their place, technically mine too. Cause I own half of it. That's where all my money is. Um, where I try to have a conversation and I told myself, I prepped myself very, very, um, very intently um, that I wanted to be calm. I wanted to be kind. I wanted to listen and I wanted to speak with integrity and not stray from my own morals and values. Meaning I didn't want to act like a bitch. I didn't want to yell. I I made a rule with my, I made many rules with myself. I stuck to all those rules. I drove home scream crying the whole way. It just wasn't, it wasn't, she, her head was so up her own ass of how can I be the terrible mother? How could I, she just needed me to validate that she was a good mom. Right. But it's like, well, you weren't, you tried your best. You absolutely tried your best. And I really appreciate that. Um, sometimes people's best suck. And the thing, the thing that really um, breaks my heart is you can still do a really shitty job as a parent, but if you own up to it and you say, I fucked up and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hope one day you can forgive me. Um, There's no hope. So your mom seems to have times where she's recognizing her bad deals. But I will say this, and my mom did this to me. It could be a fucking trap because she sure. says, I'm sorry. And then you go, okay, I will have a com- this That's conversation. That's why I think a mediator should be there in a therapist. Yeah. 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 Cause I agree with you. Like, yeah, but that, that I agree with that, that. That's the same thing that I saw as like this, like little morsel of hope was the fact that she did acknowledge yeah. that she was not a good parent and she apologized for it. And she like held space for her daughter in that. Yeah, that's huge. <clears throat> that's absolutely huge. But, um, yeah, I've heard enough. I've read enough about healthy interactions with parent and child where I'm like, wait, is this what parents are supposed to do? God damn. Um, and I think it's a big, 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 huge blinking red light that your body doesn't want anything to do with her. To me, ugh, that's, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess my only hesitation is it just seems like it's become more and more popular to like not talk to your parents to the point where it's like, the, I, I feel like- Really? Yeah, I don't for know sure. Any, I don't know anybody who doesn't it's, talk to their Well, parents. it's like when she talks about the online space, like it's a really mm. common, you'll see influencers all the time talking about it, right? And so not that it's like never, of course, sometimes it's like the best solution, but I feel like- in modern society, we've, we've, and I think a lot of it is because of politics, we have, like, younger generations have been taught or trained or, like, given the okay that when, like, a relationship isn't going well just to detach. And, like, even when, you know, there's this notion of, like, if you don't agree with your family's politics, don't show up to Thanksgiving or Christmas. And, like, that's I weird. just don't think that's the way to go about life, to just continue. Cause to me, that's like, that's like this, you know, excuse the term, but this, that's the snowflake approach to only being around people who share the same values and opinions as you. And I mean, you guys fucking know, I have a whole, whole show about doing literally not that. Um, and so I'm on the extreme side of it, but I, I, I just like, it, it's, a uh, you know, you have to take giving up a singular relationship in your life. Like this is the only mom you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, just take that seriously. Yeah. That's all, that's all that is. And I think you are. Um, but I would give it a little bit like more thought, especially, Definitely especially because at the beginning, when you said like, I've been taking in a lot of online content, Yeah, maybe stop that. Yeah. And I think that I, I also think that um, I feel really, 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 really good every single day yeah. about my decision to not talk to my parents. But one of the reasons why I feel so good about it is because I did everything mm -hmm. that I could to see if there was any hope of mending. I yeah. suggested therapy. She mm -hmm. didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I came down to travel to them to explain myself calmly and confidently. And I got the same things back and I got the no recognition. And I'm like, okay, all right. And then, you know, by the time your mom says, well, if I kill myself, it's your fault. You're like, that's a wrap on you, Nance. That's yeah. a wrap on you. So, so it, it is helpful to like do do the best that you can and then you'll feel much more secure in your decision if you don't want to cut if you want to cut contact you'll feel like yep that is absolutely the right choice sounds like she's got like a very fear-based uh, the mom has a very fear-based sense of life I mean sure. just the controlling don't be in the position I was in I just kind of had a similar relationship with my dad for a few years in uh, high school and like kind of like when what I what would he do uh, it was like very much so like, every conversation revolved around like, you're never going to make money, all that type of stuff. Mm. Um, and then, uh, honestly, like how I like got past that. Cause like we have a great relationship now was like, I just started like trolling him and like <laughs> every, like every Your time. Your methods are very interesting, Eric. But like every time he would, uh, he would try to like take the conversation in that direction. I would just kind of like point out like the like how silly he's being. Right. And, silly uh, goose. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, uh, it definitely helped as That's, far yeah. as, as far as like, it's like the, you realize this is so ridiculous for you to be saying this to me as like an adult. And then that quickly, you know, I also like started making more money and then that pretty much shut him up. <laughs> Yeah, parents are like, and I, I know it's coming from a place of protection, but like even my parents were like this, like over overly obsessed with like, oh no, you're never gonna make money. And I and I go, listen, I know you're not inside my my wild mind, but I'm like, listen, you know, I'm Corinne Fisher. I did I get what needs to be done done. I handle it all. So just everyone fucking relax. Yeah, you know, I've been like this the whole goddamn time. Like yeah. it's just stop. Yeah, what, I mean, whatever's parents gonna happen. Parents are gonna worry about you, and of course they're gonna be control freaks because they they probably don't want you to be hurt like they've been hurt. But it's like, yeah, your I, I agree with Eric in that like your mother is definitely coming from a place of absolute fear. It's it's driving it's driving her every reaction with you. Um, but the not respecting the boundaries, yeah, the thing like I to me I'm like was she I don't know what her relationship was like with her mother something there you know. Um, we had my mom, when we had my mom on the podcast years and years and years ago, she told us that she was sexually assaulted yeah. when she was 11. Sure. And that made me go, oh, that's why you left the restaurant when I was 16 after asking if I was a virgin and I didn't want to lie to you. So I said, no, I'm not a virgin. And you just fucking left and abandoned me and didn't talk to me for two weeks. It's not cool. But now I have some understanding as to why that happened. You just didn't want me being a sexual person you were fearing that I was going to get assaulted and that you were reacting uh, to the idea of your daughter being sexually assaulted. And that, of course, no reaction is going to be good when that's the place it's coming from. So yes, your mom is operating out of fear, but it's also her responsibility to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And I mean, just in general, I've been thinking about this concept a lot. Like 
embarking on parenthood in general means you're basically setting yourself up to be a failure, right? Yeah. Because even if you overall, your child has a good experience, like there's going to be a way in which you fail that child. And like, I mean, that's kind of part, part yeah. another, on my long list of disinterest in having a child. It's like, why would I just start a project that I know in some way I'm going to fail at? This doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> this sounds terrible. I'm going to create someone and go through like all this pain and like physical trauma so that someone can be, it talk paying someone every week to talk about a way in which I failed them. I'm good. No, thank you. I'm good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's good luck. You're going to figure it out. Um, you're going to figure it out. Okay. Guys, after you come see us on May 11th, well, this is before May 11th. Uh, if you're in Springfield, Missouri, raise the roof and come see me headline of the blue room at March, uh, March 22nd and March 23rd. Uh, you can sign up for my Patreon. Uh, there's a $22 level for that once a week. You can get on a Zoom with me and we'll all chat about our problems. And I really love these Zooms. I love them so much. I love hearing about other people's issues. Uh, I love that it's a group of strangers that cut all the small talk and just get right to it. I really appreciate that because I hate small talk because it makes me cringe. And uh, it makes me more feel more connected to humanity. I really like these Zooms. So you could sign up for that. There's also a $5 a month uh, level where you could just listen to the audio from those Zooms. And uh, my other podcast, it's a solo podcast called The Voices in Our Heads. I'm doing a deep dive into RJ Spina's supercharged self-healing. I'm reading a couple pages of every podcast episode uh, of each chapter, and I'm continuing those readings on the Patreon uh, so that you can listen to both day of if you want, five bucks a month. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And then the Eye of the Tiger Tour, my tour for 2024 has officially been announced. If you didn't already hear, uh, Chloe LeBranch will be featuring on all of these dates. Uh, we kind of did the last... Uh, trial uh, gig in Washington, D.C., and it was so fun. It went swimmingly. Um, so here, get a pen, get a piece of paper, write this in your iPhone, pull the car over. You're going to want to be at these cities. A lot of these are one nighters, so buy these tickets sooner rather than later because they're most of them, I'm not adding anything because I got to be somewhere the next day. All right. Tampa, Florida, April 17th. Miami, April 18th. Atlanta, April 19th and 20th. Columbus, Ohio, April 25th. Raleigh, North Carolina, April 30th. Philadelphia, May 1st. Boston, May 2nd. Portland, Oregon, May 14th. San Francisco, May 15th. Sacramento, May 16th. Seattle, May 17th. Houston, Texas, June 27th. Austin, Texas, June 28th and 29th. And Salt Lake City, Utah, September 26th. Tickets available at Corinne Fisher Dot com. And also if you're right now on Instagram, you can just go to the link tree link in my bio. My handle is philanthropy gal. And of course you can listen to my weekly uh, news and politics podcast where we try to find more similarities than differences between the right and the left. Uh, and that is called without a country every Wednesday night, those episodes drop on YouTube and everywhere you listen to podcasts. It's extremely fun. You know, check out my Katie Britt um, response to the response. <laughs> It's been pretty fun. Eric, are you going on the road? Yeah, I am. You are? Where? As a matter of fact, I'm going to uh, Edmonton, what? Vancouver, Plano, Phoenix, and Minneapolis this summer. So come get the tickets. That I have links in the in my bio I, on Instagram. I feel like if you left that as a vo voice message, it would say in parentheses on Apple, low confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I give that vibe off a lot and it's just because I'm tired. a lazy talker. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're just, you're overworked. You're tired. I'm we'll not, give that to I'm you. I'm not even tired. I got a bunch of sleep the, last night. A I, bunch. Oh, I, I slept on the plane and then I Ooh. slept all night. Yeah. yeah I, but you're over six feet tall. How good can your plane sleep be? Pretty it was, good? It was great yesterday. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm I, proud of you. I didn't That's sleep it. the night before and uh, that I had 40 milligrams of edibles and I had a six hour. Okay. Is that, that a lot? about this. Yeah. Oh, okay. 40 milligrams? What's a normal amount? 10. Oh, Eric. 10 to 20, maybe. Eric I, Downey Jr. I over would there. do like a five milligram and I smoke weed every day. Oh. Edibles. Ed everybody's different with edibles though. Wow. And you're a tall guy, I guess. So, but 40. Whoa. That's wild. But hey, it, it affects people differently. Whatever yeah. you do, you do. All right. Um, before we get to our guest, I was, I was, I have like a, a sex tip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cause now I'm fucking all the time cause I'm a huge dirty whore. No, uh, something that I realized, I'm like, what a simple thing to do that like really puts you in the moment. Just fuck a little slower. 
Mm. Like just re- like really slow. This is because you're in love. If if you're oh. not in love, do not do this. I, I will call the shower. police. <laughs> no, but meaning like, okay, so if, if he's on the bottom yeah. and I'm on top, which yeah. is my favorite position. Yeah, 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 it's a good one. If you go really slow, yeah. oh my God, it's so much hotter. It feels so much better. It's wild. Never thought to do it. Really? I was always like- You never thought that. to do it? Like really slow? It's yeah. like It's like teasing yourself with a dick. It's fucking- Yeah, no, great if you love the person. Horrifying if it's casual sex. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I Bone guess so. chilling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, been I, done to me. Ew. Yeah, I guess if we, there's no connection, oh, God, don't do that. I'm having but a if flashback. You do, if you do, sorry. <laughs> if you do have, if you're in a relationship, let's just save it for relationship uh, sex tips. Um, just going really slow. It's crazy how it's, it makes a huge difference. Mm. It's a totally different type of sex. Totally yeah. different type of it's sex. It's like a connection, yeah. Yeah, but even more, it just physically it feels good. It's just so much hotter. It's, I, I couldn't believe I've been doing this the whole time. Well, could that be under the umbrella of tantric just because it- I guess so. I've yeah. been wanting to get into that because I'm very curious. Um, it just seems like who has the time? I know. Sting was doing it because he was already famous. Yeah, he had time. Yeah, he had, he had he's, time. He has, he's an assistant doing all the other shit he's got right. to do. You could he have tantric sex when you have an assistant. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't got to watch himself for clips. Um, but yeah, oh Sting God. is one of the my main influences of why I wanted to- get into it. I still do. Who, who doesn't want to be a little bit more like Sting? Come on. Yeah. Field I'm to get a top hat. What a guy. He wears top hats? Oh, maybe I'm thinking, of, oh, Slash. Oh, you're thinking of Slash. Jesus and I knew Christ he was thinking, I, was, I, got, I go, oh, Jesus oh, Christ. This fucking young gun over here is thinking of Slash. Not even at all me. similar. Who's Fields Sting? of gold? Who's Sting? The lead what singer the of the police. Fuck? Eric, get out of the studio. Roxanne. <laughs> oh, okay. You know that? Is, yeah. He goes, you know, my mom used to play this. No, I, I had a police <laughs> My record. nana. I connected vinyl, collected vinyls. Oh, oh when, when he went through his, yeah. cool, his cool boy phase. Yeah, when I was really cool. <laughs> Glad you're out of that. hemp shirts too. Hemp wow. shirts? Yeah. Oh God. Uh-oh. All right. Well, speaking I was also of- also selling acid, to be fair. <laughs> selling acid? Yeah. yeah, just narc yourself to the oh, government. Oh yeah, my bad. I never did that. That was a joke, and everyone. Just normal <laughs> toys. We're all comedians. How much did it cost? $10. That's cheap. Is that expensive? For one tab? Yeah. Oh. Is that mm. a good price? I don't know. I've always gotten mine for free because I don't take it from it. I won't get it from it unless I like know the person. Yeah, and they've done actively done that kind of acid. That yeah, but like, like yeah. they're kind of like making it themselves. I've still and- never really done it. I have this spray and I tried it, like a little microdose, but I didn't feel anything. Oh, acid, I, I acid again, amazing, but like just very time consuming. Who has yeah, 12 I hours? I don't like that part. That's why I barely like, I don't- Cause you're stuck in I, it. I, I, I was supposed to get these nails fixed days ago and I'm like, I don't want to sit still. I can't, sorry. It's just, it's going to be like this. Um, yeah. You gotta, why don't you but listen yet I to a do podcast? Huh? Why don't you listen to a podcast when you're getting your nails done? Oh, I thought you were going to say rude. when you're taking acid. Everyone does <laughs> it. They don't want to talk to you. They want to talk not. shit about you and they like when your headphones are in. Oh yeah. So they can be like, look at this always- fucking girl <laughs> with a mustache or whatever. But like your old, they like your old joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christina but- doesn't have a mustache, everyone. Mm, I do. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, when I see other girls there on their headphones or like they're talking to somebody on no, the phone. No, if they're talking on a phone, they should be executed. And- but <laughs> that's for When sure. they're talking and it's on speaker. No, that's- I'll just look at the bitch next to me in the death nail penalty. chair yeah. talking on speaker. And I'm like- how do you sleep at night? No, that's crazy. How do you fucking sleep at night? If your house is being robbed, would you be aware of it? Yeah. Because you are so not self-aware. No, that's crazy. But Ugh. like, I mean, cause it's like when you have your headphones out, you're, you're not you're not having a ongoing conversation with these women, are you? No, but I'm just trying to be present <laughs> with them. And you know, I, mean, I don't know, I just don't wanna can, be rude. You can still, I think be present and have headphones in. I mean, like, you know, like if they give you like a cup of water, like after yeah. they give you the little back massage, go back and, oh, you know, nice. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I see you. Yeah. Um, they don't wanna yeah. have a conversation with you. I don't think they, yeah. No, they. I mean, they like they, to compliment they the color. They like to say, "Oh, the wow, color that is nice. a nice color." Yeah. yeah. You like that color? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Okay. Yeah. See ya. And that's it. And that's yeah. all that we need to do. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know who else is fine? Today's guests. Both of our guests. Yes. Two. Oh my god. One of them is a dare I say legendary stand-up comedian, and um, my title for him is filthy gentleman, uh, and his beautiful, lovely wife. Um, Who could be a stand-up comedian. Yes. So funny. She's very funny. Um, And you could track their adventures in love and marriage on YouTube. He'll he'll give you that handle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Jim Jim and and Nikki Nikki Norton. Norton. 